Welcome to the digital classroom at the Eddie Salat Innovation Center. We are all aware that the cornerstone of a healthy and growing economy is a strong educational system. The classroom is constantly evolving every day with newer technologies and methodologies being introduced. Do you want to see what that means? Well, follow me and let's have a look to see the benefits of flipping the digital switch inside the classroom. Reduce the cost of education. Provide personalized learning. Promote collaboration. Communication with parents. Easy access to multiple resources. Augmented reality teaching and learning experience. Learn 21st century skills, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration with the use of robotics, computer programming, and sharing tools, etc. Good morning, kids, and welcome to Eddie Salat's Class of the Future. Let us now hand over to the real specialists and see the classroom in action. But before that, let me set the scene. In the classroom of the future, children won't be carrying around heavy bags filled with textbooks and handing in homework assignments on pieces of paper. Digital natives will be equipped with smart devices, which will allow them to learn when and where they want. Good morning, students, and let's pick up where we left off yesterday. I had given you a homework assignment to name the top 10 technologies that impacted this generation the most. How many of you have finished this work? Well, let's check and see who has completed the assignment. What would you like to do? What would you like to do? Well, that's great. I can see that most of you have done your homework correctly. That is excellent news. By the way, I have already pushed your grades to your personal dashboards. Please review them and send me a message if you have any queries. I noticed that some of you struggled with reviewing the research and closing in on the answer. All right, we're done with grading. What would you like to do? What would you like to do? Gina, I think you should join me after class and let's see how we can work together on improving these grades. What would you like to do? All right, class, here is the chapter for our review in class today. What would you like to do? Awesome. Now, let's see how technology can bring us all together. Today's activity in class is to learn how we can collaborate and share thoughts and ideas. To do that, I am dividing you into three groups. You should be able to see which group you are in right now. Excellent. Let's get started. Each group will work in a separate activity. What would you like to do? Which option would you like to see? What would you like to do? Which option would you like to see?
Our solar system is one of over 500 known solar systems in the entire Milky Way galaxy. The solar system came into being about 4.5 billion years ago when a cloud of interstellar gas and dust collapsed, resulting in a solar nebula, a swirling disk of material that collided to form the solar system. The solar system is located in the Milky Way's Orion star cluster. Only 15% of stars in the galaxy host planetary systems, and one of those stars is our own Sun. Revolving around the Sun are eight planets. The planets are divided into two categories based on their composition, terrestrial and jovian. Terrestrial planets, including Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are primarily made of rocky material. Their surfaces are solid, they don't have ring systems, they have very few or no moons, and they are relatively small. Beyond the four terrestrial planets of the inner solar system lie the Jovian planets of the outer solar system. The Jovian planets include gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The gas giants are predominantly made of helium and hydrogen, and the ice giants also contain rock, ice, and a liquid mixture of water, methane, and ammonia. All four Jovian planets have multiple moons, sport ring systems, have no solid surface, and are immense. Orbiting the terrestrial planets is the asteroid belt, a flat disk of rocky objects full of remnants from the solar system's formation, from microscopic dust particles to the largest known object, the dwarf planet, Sirius. What would you like to do? Which option would you like to see? Volcanoes have helped shape our planet. They provide life, but also can take life away. Here's our list of the top five volcano eruptions caught on camera. At number five, we have Mexico's Popocatepetl volcano, which erupted in 2013. Popocatepetl erupts every few years. Nearby residents have learned to stay well clear of this volcano. Last year, Mount Shindig erupted in Japan, which covered nearby towns in ash and dust for weeks. Luckily, the volcano is situated on an island, so most of the magma floats safely into the ocean below. These mountain climbers are certainly lucky to be alive after Mount Kushino Arabajima erupted in Japan. They quickly take cover behind rocks to shield themselves from the elements. Costa Rica's Turrialba volcano erupted also last year. No one was reported to have been killed, but nearby airports and facilities had to be shut down for days until the ash subsided. Perhaps the most famous of all volcanoes, Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. 57 people died in this eruption, making it one of the most deadly volcano eruptions in modern times. What would you like to do? Which option would you like to see? This week, we're talking all about robots. Okay, so I bet you're wondering, what exactly is a robot? Good question. Basically, a robot is a machine created to perform a series of actions. These actions could be as simple as roaming around the house, vacuuming up dirty floors, while other robots perform more complicated tasks, such as traveling to and exploring different planets, like NASA's Mars Exploration Robots, which were built to study the surface of Mars. And did you know that humans have been building robots for centuries? In fact, many believe the first robot was created over 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece by a man named Architas. Architas built a bird-like self-propelling machine that could fly up to a distance of 200 meters. That's like two football fields. 
Today, robots come in all shapes and sizes. Some are small, even microscopic, while others are large. In some cases, as big as a car or even a truck. There are flying robots, robots can drive, and robots that can swim. Robots can do a lot of things. Who knows, maybe one day robots will be able to do just about everything that humans can do. Scientists do it all. What would you like to do? Which option would you like to see? Thank you for participating in the Eddie Salat Digital Classroom of the Future. What we showcase to you today, and much more, is possible right now using our end-to-end -end propositions in the education sector. We sincerely hope you were able to experience our vision and passion for leading the future of education.